guys, welcome back to another video and another freight market update. So it will be very curious to see if the port strike and everything else that's been happening had any effect on the freight market this week. Although I do doubt it, especially in the case of the port strike, simply because a lot of shippers did pre-plan and pre-order a lot of goods, which means that volumes will not really be affected so quickly. But yeah, let's get straight into it and take a look at the general market capacity, volumes, rejections, and diesel prices. And then we'll go into specifics for reefers, dry vans, and flatbeds in terms of the spot market and the relatively better places to go to. Ready? Let's go. All right, as always, we start with what is the net change in capacity, as well as what is the difference between what contract carriers and spot carriers get paid. So starting with capacity, as of last week, we actually saw a net increase of 111 carriers net. So what we have been seeing for the past two or so weeks is an increase in carriers, then a decrease, then an increase again. Now, when it comes to spot versus contract rates, the dark blue line is us in 2024. The light blue is comparing it to last year, 2023. So for those of you who are just seeing this video for the first time, the higher this line is, the better, because the smaller the margin between what the contract market carrier gets paid and what the spot carrier gets paid. But what we have seen in general in 2024 is that contract carriers get paid less than they were in 2023 compared to spot carriers. But for 2024, it has remained more or less flat. Currently, the difference is 63 cents per mile, meaning that contract carriers get on average 63 cents per mile more than those spot carriers. Now let's take a look at volumes versus rejections in the general market for all equipment types. So starting with volumes, the dark blue line is 2024, the light blue is 2023, and what we have seen for pretty much all of this year is that volumes are higher than they were last year, at least until now. Currently, volumes are pretty much at the same level as they were this time last year. The question is why? Is it because of the port strike? Is it because of something else? Is it because it's election year? I am not sure, but the fact remains that volumes just hit 2023 levels. Now, in terms of rejection rates, again, blue line, dark blue line is 2024 compared to the light blue line, which is 2023. Rejections in general have been above 2023 levels. They currently started going up. As you can see right here, the rejection rate on a national level is 4.75%. It's going up slightly, but it's still below that 5% mark, which means that the market is still contracting, unfortunately. Finally, let's talk about diesel prices. What's happening to diesel prices according to actual truck stops? So what we have seen is diesel prices have been going down and kind of hit a small plateau as of the last few days. Currently, diesel prices are at $3 and about 62 cents per gallon on average. Now let's move from the general market to specifics, starting with dry vans on the spot market. And I'm going to be showing you data by FTR Intel. I just make these tables. So rate per mile week over week actually increased for dry vans by almost two cents per mile. But year over year, rates are actually down 7% and compared to the past five years, they're down 17% for the dry van on the spot market. Volumes week over week also increased by 9.3% since last week. However, volumes year over year are 26% lower for dry vans on the spot market compared to this exact time last year and 47% lower compared to the five year average. Now what we do is we try to figure out the relatively better markets for all three equipment types and starting with dry vans, we look at the sonar maps which shows us rejections and volumes. I take these two, I look at every market area and I create this table over here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the top five in terms of volumes and rejections. 
This does not mean that these are the best areas to be if you have a dry van. We're just looking at it to know where the volume comes out of, where the contract carriers are rejecting freight. So in terms of top five volume market areas for dry vans, Ontario, California, Detroit, Michigan, Los Angeles, California, Atlanta, Georgia, and Dallas, Texas. Now, what about the top five markets where contract carriers are rejecting freight, which you'll see in the brackets? Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Charleston, West Virginia, Green Bay, Wisconsin, Dubuque, Iowa, and Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Now putting the markets volumes and rejections together, we get a sense of where more contract freight actually ends up on the spot market. Those top five are Houston, Texas, Detroit, Michigan, Ontario, California, Los Angeles, California, and Green Bay, Wisconsin. Now, there was a very pleasant comment that I read last week saying that someone followed my advice and they went to Houston, Texas, and it was dead. They could not get anything. Maybe it was not Houston, Texas. Maybe it was Dallas, Texas. I don't remember. The problem is, yes, these, this tells us about the volume that's coming from the contract side to the spot side. But again, we have to look at the capacity and I look at it using DAT market maps. Are they ideal? No, not necessarily, but they're the best we have. Houston, Texas is a hot market by itself but it's surrounded by deadheading trucks that are going to dilute the situation and therefore drive those rates down. Detroit, Michigan, Green Bay, Wisconsin are just lukewarm markets surrounded by overcapacity. But if you look, all of these markets have more loads than there are trucks if you're just looking at the market area and ignoring the fact that there are possibly a ton of trucks around it. But if we take into consideration the fact that those trucks are going to deadhead to the market where there are loads, then you will really quickly realize that the reality is there is not really a market that's going to keep you 100% safe just because you're always going to face that competition that's coming from the surrounding areas. Now let's do the same exact thing, but let's talk about reefers on the spot market this time. So everything is red, as you can see, which means not great. Uh, reefer rates on the spot market fell by five cents per mile week over week. They are 4% lower than this time last year and 14% lower if we're comparing to the five year average. Now, if we're taking a look at the volume, volumes actually fell by 2.8% for reefers on the spot market since last week. They are 7% lower than this time last year and 39% lower comparing to the five year average. All right, so now let's take a look at the relatively better markets for reefers if there are any. Whoops, where did I go? Using sonar maps again, rejections and volumes. Top five in terms of volumes and rejections does not tell us the best market areas for reefers, but it gives us an idea of where the volume and rejections are happening. So volumes, Joplin, Missouri, Allentown, Pennsylvania, Joliet, Illinois, Lakeland, Florida, and Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I believe it's the same exact list as it was last week. In terms of top five places where contract carriers are saying, nope, we're not gonna haul that freight, Bismarck, North Dakota, Fargo, North Dakota, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, and Rock Island, Illinois. Now putting the volumes and the rejections together, we get the top five places where more contract volume is hitting the spot market for reefers. And those are Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Joplin, Missouri, Joliet, Illinois, Rockford, Illinois, and Chicago, Illinois. Now again, I'm going to repeat this. This is telling us just the volume side, just the demand side of the equation, but we have to look at supply. How many trucks are there in the market surrounding these areas in order to understand whether this is a place where you're going to be able to negotiate. Unfortunately, all these top five, they are lukewarm or warm markets. Now, by themselves, that means that there are more loads than trucks in either case in these markets. But all of them pretty much are surrounded by overcapacity again. 
People are not idiots. They are going to deadhead for their next best opportunity. If a place like Milwaukee, Wisconsin is a place where there are loads, that means that the trucks surrounding Milwaukee are going to go to Milwaukee and dilute the situation. My point is, even though there are hot markets for dry vans, for reefers right now, when we look at them by themselves, the reality is you're still competing with all those people surrounding those hot markets, which means that, yeah, unfortunately, the rate per mile is not always going to be great, regardless of the fact that Milwaukee, for example, has more loads than there are trucks in that particular market. Does that make sense? All right, last but not least, let's talk about open deck trailers, which include uh, flatbeds and step decks spot market wise. So on the spot market, flatbeds and step decks saw a one cent per mile increase uh, week over week. It's very small, but I'll take it. However, compared to last year, spot market rates are 5% lower for open deck trailers and 10% lower compared to the five year average. Now volumes are doing something else. Over the past week, volumes increased 3.5% and are actually 11% higher than this time last year. So the fact that the spot market rate only increased by one cent per mile still tells me that there is more flatbed capacity out there right now. Now, comparing to the five-year average, volumes are down 27%. Now, when trying to figure out the best areas to go for flatbed step decks, of course, I don't have sonar. They just don't have that data. So I create my own using truck stop. First, let's take a look at the load density map on the load board. The darker it is, the more loads come out of that area. Nothing really changed that much because it's still the south and east coast, maybe some of the Midwest that has loads as well as the west coast, whereas the plain states don't really have much to offer. The question is what's going on with that capacity. And again, the darker an area is, the more trucks you will see in that area. So you can see that most trucks are kind of congregating in the south and the east coast and some of the Midwest and Texas and in California, as well as always Colorado, because rates to Colorado usually pay very, very well. So you will see a lot of flatbeds going to Colorado, hoping that they'll get lucky getting out of there. Now, putting the volumes and the capacity together, we get the load to truck ratio. So let's take a look. Anything red is over capacity. It's less than one load per truck. Anything beige, like for example, Wyoming is one of them. This is equilibrium. It's about one load per truck. Anything yellow, which is only Louisiana in this case, that's two loads per truck. And anything green is over three loads per truck. Now, just a reminder, especially right here in the Pacific Northwest, did volumes increase in the Pacific Northwest for flatbeds? 150%. But does that mean that it's actually over three loads per truck? Not necessarily, because what we see happening in the Pacific Northwest specifically is 100 brokers get one load to sell from the shipper, and they post it 100 different times each. So it kind of skews the view. It looks like there are way more loads than there actually are. So in my opinion, I think we're going to start seeing some very interesting things happening in the market. Do I think it's going to be good or bad? I have no idea. I just know that there are going to be some changes happening. For us this week, it was pretty much business as usual, except for one load that made my whole week, which paid $2,200 for 389 miles without a tarp. For that one moment, I felt like I was back in 2021. I felt so happy. But after that, it was rates as usual. So I guess we're going to have to be patient and take a look at how the market starts changing with the fact that it is election year and almost the election. We're going to have to see how the port strike affects everything, how the unfortunate disaster in the southeast is going to affect everything. So yeah, let's be patient and just basically wait and see. Anyway, guys, wishing you all an awesome rest of your week and weekend. I hope you stay safe, stay profitable, stay healthy, of course, and keep learning. See you in the next video.